I mean, I'll go back to your previous point before I answer that question. That's a good question. Um, but I think part of the reason that that people are always like, oh, anime voice people are so nice and friendly and approachable. It's like, well, none of us thought this was like a path to stardom. Mm -hmm. Like, especially those who are like, I started this in 1998 when Funimation had first come to Texas. Nobody knew anything about anime. Anime conventions weren't really a thing yet yeah. or were just, were just burgeoning. And, and nobody, nobody watched the dub. If you were a fan of Dragon Ball, you watched the, you watched the subtitles version. And this was like the, the add-on that had to be done to sell the DVD. So it was an afterthought. It was super fast. It was low production value. It was, you know, quick and dirty. And none of us thought it was going to lead to anything because first of all, who knew if anime was going to take off? And second of all, if it did, who knew that anyone was going to care about the, the dub actors? Why do you but, think that was? Well, I think the way, what changed was that the, the anime conventions became uh, a big facet on the, on the playing field that, that the fan base grew so, hot, so fast and was so dedicated that people started wanting to get together. And yeah. so, you know, a college in Minneapolis would do something and all of a sudden 300 people would show up. Mm -hmm. And then it kept, and of course, Comic-Con was in its ascendancy then too. And so anime conventions as, a, as an offshoot of that began to grow and get more and more involved. Well, they can't fly people over from Japan. Yeah, They can't fly the original actors. Um, that's just cost prohibitive. But what mm -hmm. they can get is the idiot in Dallas who the dub. <laughs> and so it kind of all for a lot of us, a lot of us was like, wait, this is a thing. This is, people are excited about this. And then you start to realize like, oh, people, People do really care about this. A lot of people watching on, on you know, Cartoon Network only saw the dub uh, and only know our voice with it. And at the same time, also Funimation got more and more involved and be got better directors and better writers and really started to focus on a quality product as opposed to an add-on to the original. Because originally it was just distribute the thing that everybody loves from Japan, get it out there. Um, and then it became like, no, this is a separate and different thing We're we're a trying to stay true to the original, but really make something good as a standalone in the English dub of it. And so that quality went up and also just the, the fans wanted more and more contact. And so, you know, you go to a, you go to a conference and they go special guest, this person, and you go, oh, I guess I'm supposed to care about this person now. And maybe you go back and listen for the first time and go, oh, wait, Chris Savitz are really cool. I do like all this stuff. I'm gonna go rewatch everything that I watched before, but listen to the dub so I can hear what Savitt does or hear what Mike McFarland does. And so those kind of, those grew, the fandom for those grew. And then that kind of took the rest of us along the way with it. And, but it's still, I think it's, it's like, none of us thought we were gonna get famous and certainly none of us ever got rich off of being anime dub actors. So that's why it's not like a, a it's still exciting to us when someone wants to talk to us about a character, especially if it's like someone comes in and is super excited about a thing you did 12 years ago yeah. that you barely remember because it was one day, but it's their favorite thing of all time. And they have an old DVD copy that they've got, you know, that's battered and bruised and they want you to sign it. Like suddenly you realize like, oh, this is actually impacting people and this. And now we're seeing the, the ability of, of anime as a community to really positively impact kids' lives and, and help people dealing with issues. And I mean, cause there's an anime that's dealing with everything and every yeah. topic under the sun. And so, you know, the, the, the chance for activism and outreach through that because of the issues of a specific character that you have done. I mean, I've seen some, some fellow anime voice actors that have really done amazing things with different communities of, of, of lifting them up and saying, hey, you're not, you're not the only one in this situation and there's a lot of ways to deal with it. So. It's just, it's been a surprise to all of us. It's been a lovely surprise, but I think that's why everyone's like, sure, you want to do a podcast? I'll do it. Call me. Let's do it.